Oh, hi, cutie. Hi, folks. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hello, folks. Hello, everyone. I'm going to give everybody two seconds to drop, to, to hop on. <laughs> Kira, I see the the Terry girls. Hey, Eva and Chloe. Hey, hey Kyra. I brought a new one. Oh my gosh, hello! Hey, Tara. And Tara's friend. Hi, Tara. Hi, Tara's friend. And this is Tara's boyfriend. Hi, oh, Tara's hello. boyfriend. <laughs> Hi, Chloe. Hi, Eva. <laughs> A couple more folks are bopping in. Oh my god, Kelsey's here. Oh my god. <laughs> hello, Ford family. Hello, Herbs. Hello, Richardsons. Hello, Williams. It's good to see everyone. Oh, that's Miss right. Williams. Oh my God. Hi, Miss Williams. <laughs> Just how I am. Hello, Miss Miller and the Hall family. I see the Fugits. They heard of them. <laughs> Welcome, everyone. Welcome. Let's get started. Hello. I'm so glad to see everybody. My name is Sarah Kate. I am the Arts Education Director here at the Hindman Settlement School. I am so glad y'all are here and y'all are here to join us, join me and Melissa for six weeks of watercolor painting with all of you lovely faces. I personally am not very artistically, I'm, I'm artistically challenged. So I've, I'm looking forward to learning right alongside with you. <laughs> We've got folks from all over Eastern, Eastern Kentucky, as well as Lexington and Louisville and Ohio, and some folks from New Hampshire. So this is a big, we're, we're, wow. we're creating a big family painting night all over the Eastern seaboard. <laughs> wow. Um, wow. Um, <laughs> yes, I'm so glad y'all are here. Um, so I, I just had a question. This is for my own personal curiosity. Has anyone ever done watercolor painting before? Raise your hands, wave at me. Watercolor painting, have you done that before? The Conleys have, Tara has, Kyron has, Louis, Louis, the Herbs have, Richardson, awesome, Kelsey has, good. Well, I'm not raising my hand for this. <laughs> um, also, I also want, am curious about um, the ages of some folks. So we've got a wide range of ages. So who here is under the age of 10? Who's under the age of 10? <gasps> I see Kyron and I see a couple of, of, the, of the Fugits. Awesome, awesome. Okay, how about, how about ages 10 to 15? 10 to 15, anybody in the middle age? Not, not, not as many. How about, uh, how about uh, 15 to 18? Who's 15 to 18? Tara is. <laughs> Another one of the... Oh, awesome. How about... And who is 18 and older? I'm raising my hand. <laughs> it's so nice. Intergenerational learning is so important. Exploring art together um, is so important. I'm so glad to get to know each, each and every one of you. Well, I'm going to stop talking and get out of the way because we have an amazing oh. art teacher with us for the next six weeks. I would like to introduce you to my dear friend, Miss Melissa Brashear. Everybody say hello, Melissa. Hi, <laughs> Melissa, everybody. <laughs> Melissa has a has a has a wealth of knowledge in arts education. Melissa has taught art at Perry Central High School for the past. We were talking about it earlier. 25, 26 years. Oh my gosh. If anybody can teach me, I think it's going to be you. <laughs> oh. Oh, wow. Well, I'm, I'm excited to be here. I really am. And I'm a little nervous. I'm not going to lie, guys. So bear with me on this first night, okay? We'll get through this and we'll have some fun. And that's the whole point is to have some fun. So I'm that's excited. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Melissa. I'll turn it over to y'all. Okay. Okay, here we go. Um, so my name's Melissa Brashear and a lot of my students just call me Miss B. And because of that, and people buy me little bee things. I've got bee things all over the place. And you can probably see over my shoulder and see my crazy classroom and how there's so much stuff going on. But that's high school art for you. We have something going on in every class and, and some community service projects and stuff. But anyways, I, I was telling Sarah my story earlier and you guys may want to, may, may get a kick out of this. But um, when I was growing up, I, I did art a lot on my own. Uh, actually, my dad, he, he had cancer. He was really sick. And I was an only child. So to keep myself busy in ways that wouldn't uh, 
you know, bother him. I would do quiet activities and I would draw and paint. People bought me a lot of uh, craft kits and things. And I love those books. I think my first level watercolor started, and I don't know if you guys have ever done these, but they were coloring books that you just paint with water and the color would appear. And I think that's where I fell in love with watercolor. Um, but I, all through grade school and high, you know, grade school, we didn't really have art very often. It was maybe once every two or three months, you know, we might have an art class. So high school, I really fell in love with art and I had a wonderful teacher, Mr. John Goy. And I don't know if some of you guys may have even heard of him because he's got a really good reputation around here. And he was a wonderful teacher who I ended up getting to work with here at Perry Central. But all through high school, you know, my friends and, and peers would say, well, I guess you're going to be an artist, you know, and I was one of those straight A kind of bookworm kids and uh, people thought I was going to be a doctor or an attorney or something like that. And, uh, so I went to school to become an artist. Um, you know, some people were kind of disappointed in me in that, some of my family members, but I have a Bachelor of Fine Arts degree in graphic design, so I was going to go off. And I really wanted to work at a magazine. That was my dream, you know, to be a designer for some magazine. And uh, so um, after graduation, I came back home and I was going to start sending out resumes and, and, you know, trying to get a job. And I was working a, uh, at a little uh, shop that did T-shirts. I was doing the art for screen printing for T-shirts and stuff at this sporting goods store here in town. And, and But I was supposed to have a job. We actually, I'm in Hazard, Kentucky, and we, we have a design firm here. We have a graphic design place. And they had, the girl who was their artist had graduated the semester before me. I graduated from EKU with a, the BFA in, in design. And so the girl who was their artist had graduated before me, and she decided to run away to New York with her boyfriend. So they needed an artist, and they told me I had the job. And then called me back like two days later and, and uh, told me she came back. So they gave her job back. So I was saying I was hired and fired within two days. But because of that, um, they felt a little bad about it. And uh, the, a principal at, at one of the local middle schools had actually called them thinking they may know some artists. And they said, do you have anybody that could work with our fourth graders? And they gave them my name. And so they hired me on a Friday. And on a Tuesday, I was looking at like 32 fourth grade kids and I had never taught anything in my life and it just it kind of came naturally and it was fun and I loved it and I loved the kids and I called my mom about two weeks into it and I said this is a, what I'm supposed to do with my life you know and before that if somebody said what are you gonna do with art be a teacher I would get so mad I was like no there's no way I'm gonna be a teacher you know I'm gonna be a big designer but I ended up being a teacher and I've been a teacher for 20 six years now count uh, it's been a long time and actually longer if you count when I was working with the little boy so anyways um it's a job I really really love and I love my students and in, I've been in high school uh for, for the 25 well 26 years and um so I've really enjoyed the kids and we have a lot of fun here and it's, it's kind of chaos most of the time and it's good chaos it's fun uh one of my favorite things to work in is water and I don't know, uh, uh, watercolor is not expensive. It's something that is portable. It doesn't make a big mess. Um, and I find it very soothing. I don't know if it's something to do with the water. Um, I don't know, but it's, it's just, to me, it's a very calming, soothing activity. And oftentimes if I'm stressed out or worried or something going on, I'll take time and just, you know, do some painting and it calms me down. And that kind of focuses me, refocuses me again. Uh, so I was going to show you guys today, and we're just going to, a lot of you guys said you had painted before with watercolor, so that's wonderful. Um, we're just going to do some baby steps to get started out, and we're going to have some fun. And don't worry, no worries. Don't think about, uh, don't worry about somebody seeing your work. And I hope you guys will talk back and forth with me and show me your work as we go and, and ask questions. Don't be afraid to ask questions. The high school kids, when we were doing distance learning, they didn't want to talk. So I hope you guys will talk to me while we're doing this. But uh, gosh, I don't even know where to start. Uh, the first thing I think we're going to do uh, is talk about the stuff you need to do a watercolor. Uh oh, okay, sorry. And uh, Miss Sarah has has hooked you guys up with some really good supplies. I'm I'm very impressed with this, with your pad of watercolor paper. 
And this brand that you got, I think everybody got the same one. Is that right, Miss Sarah? They got the, the cans on. Those are great. And watercolor paper is thicker than regular paper because when it gets wet, it won't buckle. And I was going to show you the difference between using that and like just regular printer paper or something. And I'll show you that. Uh, when you wet it, it'll buckle, it'll roll, it'll curl up. I'm trying to find my brush here, hang on. So this is a regular piece of printer paper. And I'm gonna turn my document camera on, so I hope you guys can see this. So I'm gonna share my screen when I get this going. So give me just a second. Okay, this is finicky now. Can you hear it? Here we go. It's a little slow and it's going to look like I'm doing things in slow motion. Okay. Can you guys see that? Are you seeing my screen? Not yet. Okay. So I got it. How's that? Can you see that? Not quite yet. Okay, I don't know what to do. Hmm. There we go. That's it. Yay! Okay. Like I said, I'm not real, I'm not real technical oriented here, so bear with me, guys. So, anyways, I'm just going to show you the difference. If you have plain paper and you try to watercolor with it, um, what happens to it? But first, let's talk about your supplies in general. I kind of got off track there. But you got a good watercolor paper and watercolor brushes. You have to have a soft brush. And most of the time when you go and buy brushes, you'll see, it'll say on the package, maybe like what it's good for, like acrylic or oils or watercolor. So you got some wonderful, super soft brushes. I'm gonna just lay those out there. So you can see, but they're really, really soft as compared to a brush well, that might be for Acrylic paint brushes are going to be real, real. No, thick. you're just okay. going and give me. So, I'm trying to get my thoughts in a row. Sorry, guys. So let's play. Let's just play. We'll just get started. Um, watercolor comes in trays like what you have. Those little palettes, okay. And you also can get it in a, a tube form, and you can, you know, just squirt out little drops of the paint. And but these these palettes that are in the little cake form is, is just fine. And that's usually honestly what I use when I do watercolor painting. And the wonderful thing about watercolor is when it dries up, you can wake it back up again. You can wet your brush and, and it'll come back to life. So even if you have an old palette, I brought one out to show you guys. Um this one, see how used it is and worn out, and there's like barely any green there. But you can really still use that, and all this will come back to life that's in the lid here once you add water back to it. Okay, so I did some things today playing around with effects on watercolors, and that's what's on my palette here, just playing around. And we're going to do some special effects with watercolors today. So I painted on just a little couple of swatches of color to show you one technique that a lot of artists do is they will watercolor and then go back over it with colored pencils or ink. So I wanted to show you how that works. This is dry and see how nice the ink goes over it. So, you know, some artists will paint and then they'll outline their drawing with ink. Uh, you can come back in with colored pencil and color on them and do different things with colored pencil. So it opens up a whole lot of opportunities with, with the paint. One little, um, well, I'll show you that. In a second. Right, so let's play with some brushes. So if, if you got water, if I got a bowl of water, you got a cup of water. Yes. All right. Um, I learned something today that I actually never really thought to do, and I literally just learned this today. But um, it was a suggestion by this lady. I, I watch her YouTube videos, and her name's Mary Doodles, and she's really fun to watch. And I was going to show you guys some Mary Doodles stuff. Um, in a minute, I'll show you a clip from her, but um, she said, have two cups of water, one to clean your brush with and one to have pure clean water. And, you know, that's a really good idea. If you just have one 
cup today, we're good. But maybe for next time, we'll try the two cup thing and see how that does, okay? So you should have a paper towel that you can dab off your brush a little bit and um, your pad of paper. So there's some different um, types of techniques that I was gonna, we're gonna play with. And the first one is called a flat wash, okay? So you're gonna wet your brush and let's take our big square. You can see this one, the flat tip brush. Let's try the big flat tip brush and play with that a little bit for a moment. So I'm gonna wet it. And you're just going to, whatever color you wanna play with, um, just wet that with your brush. Don't pour water on your paint cake. Um, I have students that try to do that sometimes. I'm going to start off with orange. I think orange will be fun. So I'm just going to wet and get a little bit of that paint on my brush. Okay. And, and we're going to do it, what's called. I hate to interrupt you, but um, should we tear off one sheet of the paint paper to work on, or is it okay to paint on oh. the actual pad? Um, you can tear it off or you can leave it on the pad, whatever, whatever works best. Mm -hmm. If it's several of you mm -hmm. using the, the pad, then I would just tear them off. Uh, now, um, usually, um, you can tape your paper down with like masking tape or painter's tape. We don't have to do that, and so we didn't include that. But uh, if it does ever curl, you know, that's one way to keep it uh, steady is to just tape around the edges with a tape. They have artist tape, too, and it won't peel your paper, won't hurt your paper. Uh, they actually call that stretching your paper but it just keeps it from curling up a little bit. But this is pretty good paper, so you can tear it off, that's fine. We're just, right now, I just want you guys to get used to playing around with the media itself and just um, just making some colors. Um, but we're gonna learn what's called a flat wash, okay? So with a flat wash, we're just gonna get a little color on our brush, okay? And you're gonna, let's just make a little box. But the trick, what we're gonna try to do is make it all the same, make the color the same all through the box. Okay. You see how it makes little puddles in places? If we're trying to do a flat wash, we want to kind of push those puddles around where we want them to go. And that is the whole secret to watercolor. How do you push your petals or puddles around? So we want to, the, the, the goal of this one is just to make a really even color orange or whatever color you picked on your brush. Any color's fine. Okay, so that's called a flat wash. And we would just, I still got a little puddle there, don't I? See how evenly you can spread it. And we have different brushes with different tips to do different things. So if you're doing a bigger area, you want to use this bigger, bigger brushes, okay? So did everybody get a flat wash down? Pretty good. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to work on what's called a gradient. I'm going to do a different color this time. I think this time I'm going to do pink. I love this pink. And with a gradient, you start off with a lot of color, okay? I'm gonna start off with a with a box of, of color here, a lot of color. I'm gonna make it as big as we did before. Just a little bit. And you may have to reload because you want a lot of color in this first box. So you may have to dip your brush back over on the paint a minute. I have this kind of saturated with color. And then we're going to spread this out and we're going to wet our brush just a little. I just put a little more water on my brush and kind of, you kind of, um, let's see if I can show you this. Like on the, you clean off your brush. I think I can get that under the camera. There we go. You want to just kind of not do the tap, tap, tap to clean it off, but just kind of gently wipe the excess off on the side of your uh, cup or jar or whatever you're using. And we're going to pull this paint now from the square we just made, and we're gonna kind of bring it gently across. I'm gonna do my best to be uh, very Bob Ross-like tonight. Do you guys know who Bob Ross is? Have you ever seen Bob Ross? He is always painting happy trees. So, and what you wanna do with this, and now we're gonna 
stretch it a little bit farther. So I'm dipping my brush in the water again. And I didn't put any more paint this time, just water. And so we're going to spread this out to see how much lighter it gets as we go across. That's the secret to watercolor because to make it lighter, you don't add light to it, you add more water. So for something to be kind of darker in color, you have more paint and then lighter, you have more water. And when you can learn to control your puddle and spread it out and have lighter tints of the color, that's the whole secret to watercolor. Um, another one we're gonna do is dry brush. So this time, we're not going to have much water on our brush at all. We want to wipe off the excess, maybe even dab it on your paper towel. We have a little paper towel here. And I'm going to do, let's do blue. So I'm going to have my damp brush, not very much water, and some blue. And it's going to look all rough and textury. I don't think I have enough water. Sometimes you have to put a little more water, but you don't want it liquidy like we did the, the first two. So, and I'm gonna drag this across and you're gonna get this effect. See how it left open places like where the paint, let's let the paper show through. That's called dry brush. I want you guys to practice that. And all these techniques we can use to create different looks, uh, backgrounds and textures and things. It's kind of cool. So now I wanna show you something called wet on wet. This is really fun. This is my favorite thing to do. So we're gonna get our brush all nice and clean, super clean, okay? And I'm gonna paint just a square of water this time, just water, no paint on it. It's still got a blue tint to it, but that's okay. We're just gonna put a bunch of water, not, a, not too much, but you're gonna make a little puddle in our shape of a square. And the fun thing about watercolor is it only goes where the water is. You might think, oh, it's going to run everywhere and, and make a mess, but it doesn't. It only goes where the water is. So to do a wet on wet, this is something you would do if you're painting a, lit, a big sky or an ocean scene, and you got to cover a lot of space. So we're going to dip our brush, and I don't know what color we use. Let's use green, I guess. So I'm going to get some green on my brush, and I'm going to go back into that puddle. And I'm gonna put the, the green in there and see how it kind of puddles up and you push your little puddles around. But that that's one way to cover a great big area of your paper is because that water controls where the paint goes. So that's a wet on wet technique. How are we doing guys? Anybody got a question? Okay. All right. This one's even more fun than the wet on wet. Wet on wet's my favorite, but this one's more fun. This is called a bleed. So we're just literally going to make a puddle. I've still got greenish tint on my brush. Let me clean it up a little better. Okay. So we're going to make a puddle. I'm just going to have a green tint of water again. So we're putting clean water on our on our paper. And this time with a wet brush, we're gonna kind of wet our brush a little bit more and we're gonna go into a, a color. So I'm gonna do purple this time. And it doesn't matter what color you guys do, we're just trying out these techniques. But you're gonna kind of have your brush kind of wet and you're just gonna touch it to the water and watch it go. How beautiful and fun is that? I like to do that sometimes for backgrounds on stuff when I want, don't want to do like a whole big solid color, but just it's so much fun. And you can try different colors if you want to to put into that. You can clean that one off and try another one. Let's put like a little, let's go back to my pink. You know, it's so fun. Let's try it with pink added in. And it, it's, it's called doing a bleed. And you can kind of stretch your water out and do fun things with the paint. Okay. That one's really fun. We're gonna make a picture tonight too. Don't don't feel bad. We're gonna we're gonna have something fun. But I just want you guys to play with the paint first and get used to it and not be afraid of it. And um, my high school kids sometimes they they feel like they can't they have to control the paint, and you don't. 
the fun thing about watercolor is if you let it do what it's supposed to do and let it be water and you can't really control it that much, then that, that's when you have the fun with it. Uh, a big important part of watercolor is doing layers. And to do that, we have to be very patient and you have to let the watercolor sometimes dry completely and then go back into it. So to do that, we would just, um, you know, have a light layer with your first layer of color, like this brown, for example. Um, and you would let that completely dry. So I'm just going to paint this little square. And we'll come back to that in a minute after it's dried. So um, you can overwork your paper. You can put too much color on it or too much water on it. And it might start peeling up or something. So it's important to let it rest and take, maybe jump over to another part of your picture or take a go get uh, something to drink and take a little minute break, you know, five minute break and let your paint dry for a bit before we go back to it. And I want to show you this one special effect and you guys can try this at home. It's so, so cool. I'm going to do this with a really dark blue. Oh no, that's another, that's a bright blue. Okay, we'll do it with a bright blue. And I bet you've never heard of this, but if you take table salt, good old salt, we're going to paint our little square of blue here. And it's kind of watery, so we're really doing that. That kind of can you move flat your wash uh, that we can you move your sheet up? Yeah, there you go. Yeah. So we're doing like a of the wash, like we did the first one. So it's got a lot of paint in there. But if you take salt, your good old table salt, like you put on your French fries, and you sprinkle it on the paint, and you can try this later. The salt kind of sucks up the color. I wish this light would come on there. And um, it's not gonna be brighter. And when it dries, you kind of flake the salt off and it makes little stars. And that's a way to make a starry sky. So one more thing or two, I'm having fun doing this, but I'm, I'm gonna show you splatter painting. Does that sound like fun? Splatter painting? For splatter painting, you're going to have, of course, a lot of water on your brush, and you're going to put it in your color. I got orange here. Doesn't matter what color you choose. And one way to control where your splatters go is you kind of hit the brush over your finger. I want you guys to practice this because splatters are important too in watercolor. I use a lot of splatters for backgrounds, or what if I'm doing a scene that has autumn leaves on the ground or gravels. Um, I might do a lot of splattering to get that effect. So practice splattering a little bit. The fun thing about this, it washes off, it washes off your clothes, it washes off your hands. Have you guys, are you doing the salt thing right now? That's awesome. Yeah, it needs to be really good and wet for the salt thing to work. And you can try different kinds of salt. Like we've, we've done it with, uh, of course, table salt's real little, but you can do it with like kosher salt that's bigger and it makes bigger star shapes. So it's a fun way to do different textures. I love that they're passing the salt back and forth. It's so cute. Let me see if I can see everybody. I don't think I can right now. So when, when the watercolor dries, it's got the salt on it. You want to, you'll just kind of wipe the salt off and you get to see all those cool marks it made. So we've done splatters and I've got one more special effect to show you guys. So I'm going to kind of give you an assignment for the rest of the week um, for to play around with this and see what else you can do. You've got this whole wonderful big pad of paper to play with. So that's, that's I'm so happy about your supplies. There's the thing that we're doing right now. My, my high school kids are doing this and I'm going to show you some examples that they did, but it's called Crayon Resist. And if you have crayons at home, you can mark a, a color with crayon. My internet connection is unstable, okay? I'm at school, I don't know what's going on with that. Um, but you can take a crayon and the, they're waxy, right? So the paint will not, um, it will not cover the waxy crayon, all right? So this is called Wax Resist. So let's take 
don't know what color. Gold color, I guess. And paint over it. And see how the crayon, like it, it runs away from the crayon. You can do some really fun effects with that. And my favorite is to use a white crayon and maybe write your name. And you can't see it, right? But you're gonna do magic and we're gonna make it appear. And I'm gonna put a little blue on my brush this time. And I'm gonna go over my name. I don't know if you can see it. I don't think I got it waxy enough. Let's try that again. Just get to kind of see it. Try it again. It'll work this time, I think. Okay, this is an epic fail. You can sort of see it coming in. But anyways, when it dries, it won't stick to where the crayon is. Let me show you some. My students have been doing that this week. And uh, we are learning about Native American art and how that they use, um, they use geometric shapes and their weavings and stuff. And so we did crayon resist on a big, on a big level. And this is one of my students' work. I hope you can see it good. And see how that the paint did not cover where the crayon was. And it came out really nice. I wish that was a little brighter, I'm sorry. If it's not showing it. A little bit better. But anyways, that's a crayon resist. Okay, you guys ready to paint a picture? Okay. I'm gonna tear off my practice sheet. The practice sheet is so much fun. Uh, and, and you should always keep that, like if you do a sketchbook or something, if you look at my, look at my salt, see how it's starting to separate? You can really start to see the effects happening with the salt. And also, I was going to show you the layered effect. I forgot to go back and do that one. So my brown is dry now. And I'm going to pick up and come back over there. And you can see how it gets darker. And that's how you do the layered effect. So we've got all kinds of fun things we've experimented with. So let's put those into action. And we're going to make a fun little fall tree. Okay, it's autumn. The leaves are starting to turn. And so we're going to take a good clean wet brush and we're going to start off with our wet on wet thing. So we're going to put water across the top of your page about real about halfway down from the top. You're just going to wet the paper with clean water first thing. So wet your paper on a new sheet of paper. We're on a new sheet of paper. I want to be able to see you guys working. I don't know if I can with my ladybug thing going though. So we're just going to put clean water, okay, guys, all the way about halfway down, two thirds down, something around there. Awesome. Our um our phone fell. Could you um say what you had asked us to do one more time, please? Okay, we're starting on a new paper, a new piece of paper, and you're just gonna take clean water and you're just gonna paint from the top all the way down to about two thirds down the sheet of paper, with just with clean water, just paint it all the way across with water. And we're going to do the wet on wet technique to make a sky. Okay. Does everybody, does everybody got your paper wet? All right, so I'm going to make my sky, I'm going to blend a little bit of blues and purple, so I'm going to dip my brush. I'm still using the big flat wide brush right now, but I'm going to dip it in a little purple 
a little blue, which that's kind of bad. You're supposed to clean your brush in between, so don't do what I do. Look how pretty when we start putting that on that wet page. And if it's dried up a little bit, just dip your brush back in the water and we're going to spread that around. And you remember when I made it get lighter a minute ago, like we did that gradient where you started off with a lot of color and you got less and less. That's what we want to do. So we want to paint a lot at the top and spread it out. And the farther you go down, the lighter it's going to be. Now this would be a cool time if you wanted to put some salt up here in the blue, like we've learned a minute ago, if you have some handy, you could do that. If you have paper towels handy, or even toilet paper, tissue paper, there's a, a way to make the sky look like it has clouds. I'll do a little example for you. But you can just dab your paper towel, like squinch it up on the end, just make a little paper wad, and just press and lift. And you can actually kind of make clouds by pressing and lifting your paper towel. How cool is that? And if they look a little funky, you can take your wet brush and kind of Go back and brush them a little bit. And kind of maybe gonna draw it more look cloud like with your brush. I think this is so fun, right? I think if you have a paper towel, you know, if you got a good soft paper towel, these old brown ones here at school, the you know, the professional ones, they don't do really well for that. But a soft paper towel or a tissue paper looks really good to lift it up. That's called doing a lift to make the clouds like that. And also, if you make a boo boo and like make a mistake and you're like, oh no, uh, or like sometimes I've dripped another color on a place it shouldn't be or smeared something by accident, then you can take clean water to that spot and then lift it off with a paper towel. And, and a lot of times you can fix your mistakes. The thing about watercolor paint, it's, it's see-through, it's translucent. And if you were doing an acrylic painting and you make a mistake, you can just paint over it, but you can't really paint over with watercolor because you can see through it. But that's what gives it its pretty quality and softness is that you can see through it. I'm gonna guys give you, I'm gonna give you just a chance, a, a second or two. I'm going really fast, I'm sorry. I'm gonna slow down, I'll let you guys get caught up with me. Once we've got our sky, we're going to put a little bit of ground in here, I guess, of softness. Uh. Sarah, how do I get to see the gallery? I can only see one. Is it because of my document camera? No, you should be able to click on view and then click on um, side by side gallery. Okay, I've lost my view part. Oh no. Look at everybody painting. Oh my gosh. Painting of a storm. Okay, I've lost you. I can't find you. All right. Okay, here we go. Sorry. I don't have view anymore. One minute. <laughs> no, I don't have view anymore. Well, I'll tell you. Uh... I'll tell you, Melissa, everybody. Everybody doing great. <laughs> why? I see that. Why am I disappearing? <laughs> With Zoom share. I'm crazy. Sorry, guys. I see a lot of color. Is this fun? Tell me honestly. I spent too, time, too much time explaining stuff, right? We just should have got right down and painted all, right from the get go. No, That's this what's is fun. great. This is great. Oh, you're doing the paper towel? Yes. Yay. And no more paint. So it's the techniques, you know, the techniques has really helped. So yeah, it's enjoy. fun because especially the paper towel thing, I think that one you can have a lot of fun with. Yeah. And what if you just want a crazy background and you want it to be kind of abstract and you don't want anything particular, like you could dab a hole. 
whole lot of different paint colors on there and they have a whole lot of different spots and make this really cool effect for the background. I sometimes do that. I like to paint animals. I guess you guys saw some of my pictures on there, but I love to do the little songbirds and I love to paint um, just animals in general and uh, nature stuff. You know, I like, I like landscapes and animals and well, actually I like, I pretty much like everything. Um, but when I do that, sometimes I don't want to paint a whole scene and I'll just do some pretty colors or I'll do the splatter in the background or the wet on wet and like, like it tie dye looking in the background. And, and around my animals so that the animals are the star of the picture and you don't have to worry about all the stuff in the back. And that's a fun way to add color to your design that you're making. I want you to figure out how to view it. We'll figure this out before next time I will, I will practice. <laughs> my uh, Zoom skills. You might have to stop presenting. I might have to, I bet I would. Okay, thank you. And you guys, I'm so bad with names, so you gotta help me learn your names, okay, as we go. You'll definitely know mine, don't worry about that. <laughs> I was gonna say, y'all who uh, who are logged in on a on an iPhone or something, we 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 would love to know your name so you can change your name in Zoom so we know who you are instead of iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be great. This is Peyton Combs. Oh, hello, hey Peyton. Hi, Peyton. <laughs> hi. She's only four, so she's kindly shy. <laughs> oh, don't be shy, baby. My favorite thing is is. It's little artists. That's my favorite thing. Little kids don't worry about their art. They just make it. And that's what's awesome. She said she liked painting <laughs> animals was her favorite. Me too. Awesome. Well, we're going to get to do some of that. We're going to paint. We're going to paint an animal or two while we're um, doing this class. If I close this, nope. That person that you can see, is there a plus on them? All I could see was uh, the Terry's it's on my end. I don't know why I'm doing wrong. Was there a plus uh, at the corner? No, I, I mean, I'm, I don't know. I don't I'll know. help you There's a chat. I'll, I'll walk you through it after Miss Melissa. Thank you. Sorry. Okay. You're fine. How far, how far down the paper? Are you going? Okay. You guys have, um, have a, have this much done now? Is everybody kind of caught up? Well, what I want to do next and it's basically the same thing, but I'm just gonna pick up, and it can be whatever color you want, but we're just gonna make a really light, we're gonna put some water down up towards the bottom now, and I'm gonna um, turn that into the ground. So it can be whatever colors you want it to be. I think I'm gonna just do mine in a, I guess a little bit of brown, but just, Doing that wet on wet. I'm not putting a whole lot of color on there. I don't want it to be real dark. So I'm just going to paint a little brown and see how it got a little dry there. If that happens, you just go back with some more water on your brush and start pushing those puddles. Push your puddles around. And that's a way to show dimension on stuff too. Um, you might have something puddle up where you want it to look darker. That's a trick we use in watercolor. Like kind of push them around, push those darks where you want them to be. You can be green here. You can do blue here. I mean, it doesn't matter. Like whatever color you feel you want to put there. And that's another fun thing about watercolor. I like to do watercolor and do crazy unexpected colors. Like um, I painted one of my friends. She asked me to paint her bulldog puppy. And so I painted her, but I painted her in hot pink and turquoise and bright green. And she was really fun to paint.
you know, my paper curled up a little bit. Do y'all see that? That it's kind of sticking up a little. So, you know, that's the good thing. If, if you can tape it down um, to like a the table or surface you're using, that'll help prevent that. But I mean, it's it's not a big deal if it does that. It'll it'll happen sometimes if you got a lot of water on there. But it's not a it's not a bad thing. Watercolor paper, um, another thing to look for is you'll see it on the cover and it'll say, I'll show you where to look. And that's how you get to get good watercolor paper. Right here it says 140 pounds. Okay. What that means is a ream of this, which is like 500 sheets, would weigh 140 pounds. Um, a really heavy duty watercolor paper will say 300 pounds there. Um, and even thinner, lighter watercolor paper might say 90 pounds. So I like 140 and up um, because it's a little thicker. So if you're buying watercolor, and these are at, at Walmart, like you can get this stuff at Walmart. Sometimes Big Lots has art supplies, and when you catch them there, it's usually a pretty good price. I'm letting everybody get caught up. I bring my phone out. I wonder if I'll get that back off again so I can see you guys. Okay. Huh. I see Miss Sarah and I see the Terry. Oh, and is it Kyra? Is that how you say it? Hi. And Miss Hall and Miss Mueller. What a beautiful group of artists I have working with us tonight. And <laughs> thank you guys so much for signing up for this. Just to get your kids involved with painting and art. It's just so wonderful. It makes me happy. And even yourself, just something, you know, especially with this COVID and, and things have been kind of scary and depressing and um it's I'm getting I'm getting feedback from my phone. I said I got but it's um this is a really good way. It's almost like therapy that you can do at home. And when my children were little, they're 19 and 15 now, but when they were little uh, in the summer, when we were home from school, we would uh, have art day. And I would just give them uh, watercolor and watercolor paper and whatever else they wanted to play with. And we would have art day. And, and I highly encourage that. If you have children, if you have little, especially just let them have a day of family art, like tonight, it's a wonderful thing. And even when this class is over, like maybe you can keep doing this. Has everybody got the bottom done now? We're gonna make some treetops when you guys are ready, but we gotta we gotta get started a little bit. We're gonna switch brushes. I'm not gonna use the big fat square brush this time, and I'm gonna switch over to. A spray brush. Okay, we're we're running a little bit late, so you guys are gonna have be able to do this. And oh gosh, I needed to show you uh, before we go any further because we're running a little bit long. Um, the the drawings that I sent you in your kit. Everybody got those, right? I want to show you quickly how to do the transfer with that before we make our trees. And we'll have time. We'll do our trees real quickly. But I sent you those pictures of, you know, there was like a sunflowers and one with a little bird. And those are kind of the sketches for what I want to paint with you guys. 
And I was gonna show you a little example of how to transfer them onto your watercolor paper. Okay, so suppose you have a flower, okay? And you wanna, you wanna put that flower on your watercolor paper so you can paint it without having to try to draw it. This will work with any image. You can print it off your computer. You can draw something and maybe you wanna recreate that drawing multiple times. So pretend with my flower, you're gonna turn it over and you're gonna use a pencil and you're gonna shade it dark, okay? I need a wooden pencil, I have one laying here. I'm all jumbled up working around my keyboard and stuff, sorry, it's a mess here. So you turn it over see, and you can kind of see where the flower is. It's on this side of the paper. So we turn it over to the back and you want to put your, um, you want to shade with pencil, just kind of color it in with pencil wherever that image is on the other side, okay? So it may be a big image like what we had is gonna be kind of big. Uh, you don't have to do the whole paper, but if you can't see through it good enough, you can also kind of hold it up to a window and, and trace it that way. So anyways, I've shaded my back of my paper where the image is really dark, which is a really cool trick. Um, once you learn how to do this, you can transfer anything and it's really cool. It's called graphite transfer. So then I'm gonna put my, my flower where I want it on my paper, pretend that's watercolor paper we're transferring it to. And you're gonna trace this original flower, okay, on top of your watercolor paper. And then when you pull the paper back, it has drawn it for you on your watercolor paper, okay? So if it was one of the little designs I sent, like the bird or the, uh, flowers, that's how you would get them onto your watercolor paper so you don't have to worry about drawing it correctly. And uh, if you have any questions about that, um, let me know or, or I guess email me or Miss Sarah and we can kind of go over that with you. But I put the instructions in there with the pictures. Okay, so we got to hurry. So let's get a pointy tip brush, okay? Pointy tip, kind of fat. Not, not really, but Let's see, the biggest pointy tip we have is, oh, I see it. Sorry, I'm gonna get them out of package. Okay, so we have this guy, pointy tip brush, and we're gonna wet the brush, and we're gonna start drawing dot, little this is polka dotting with some orange leaves on here, okay? and just dot, 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 just dab away. And we're making these shapes like the tops of the trees. And you can wet your brush if it starts getting um, funny shapes like mine was. So I want it to be a little more round. I'm gonna make lots of dots of orange. Okay. We're gonna have a bunch of trees. So we're gonna take this all the way across your paper. It's not going to be just orange. We might we're going to have some other colors too. So we're going to have some orange trees. Just dabbing. You can splatter right here if you want to. Let's do some splatter just for fun. Just practice some of those techniques that we looked at. You don't have to splatter, but if you want to splatter, go for it. This is totally for fun. All right, now I'm switching colors. So I clean my brush and I'm gonna get in the red a little bit and I'm gonna come back in and I'm gonna make a lot of red right here. Wherever you wanna put your red, you go for it. Put your red wherever you want it. I'm gonna have my tree on the left being a lot of red. We got a little orange in there too. Okay. That's what we want. I'll put a little red over here, just for fun. Spread it about a bit. What would be some other fall colors? What do we need to have in our fall leaves? Some yellow maybe. So make sure your water's clean. And if you're only using one jar of water, then sometimes you have to stop and clean it and like get fresh water. So that way, when we do a painting the next time, if you guys can have two jars of water, 
one for clean water and one to clean your brush in, then that will be awesome. And that it really does work good if you can remember to do that. And be careful if you're drinking a drink and don't dip your brush in your drink because I've done that so many times. Yeah, I've drunk my I've drunk my paint water and I've dipped my brush in my <laughs> in my cup. So so now I'm bringing yellow. We're gonna have a little yellow tree right here. Little happy tree like Bob Ross. And if you guys have never watched him, um, I think I'm sure he's streaming. I think it's on Hulu, maybe, or uh, I think Amazon Prime. But you can watch episodes of Bob Ross, and he was such a wonderful man. And um, I learned that you know he never got paid a dime for doing that show, and it was just so sweet. Okay, so I got a yellow tree, I got orange trees and red. What what we could bring some green. Maybe, maybe there's still a little bit of green leaves left in here somewhere. So right in here, maybe. Wherever you guys want to put it. I'm gonna put a little bit of green left. Like this tree's still trying to to hang on. And it, watch ha what happens when it mixes the green and the orange and the red. They kind of make a a brown color. That's okay. And we can make these fuller. You can have a lot more dots. You know, we, we don't have to. And this is another thing where I showed you where we let it dry and we do layers where our first set of little dots is dry. So these next layers we put in, they're going to look darker than the first set. And that's good because that makes it look like your tree is 3D, like it's really big and full. me paint without using that document camera because it's slow motion I'm, and the color's not great on there and I'm sorry but maybe we can have that figure something out next time okay I'm gonna come some more red I love red what's your favorite color you might have a favorite color my favorite color is pink Ooh, I love pink Yay, well, you know what? Let's put some pink in your leaves, right? We can totally do that. It's our painting, we do whatever we want. I'm gonna put pink in mine, just for you, okay? Pink leaves, how cool is that? Yay, let's put a pink leaf or two here. Pink is awesome. Pink is a happy color. You cannot be sad at all if you have on pink, ever, it's a rule. You have to be happy if you have pink. Okay, so we got lots of leaves, and you guys, I'm, I'm so excited to see what you've done. So what's, you tell me, what's the next thing we need to have our trees? What do we need to have? How about some tree branches and tree trunks, right? So I'm going to get into, hmm, do I want brown or do I want black? I think I want black. Yours can be whichever color you want. You can have them be purple, black, brown, doesn't matter. So I'm going to make mine black. Okay, so this is going to be the, the only hard part about this is I'm going to show you on my practice page like we were doing a minute ago. Is if you're trying to make a skinny line, you want to just use the end of your brush to make your line. If you push down on it, it makes a fat line, okay? So if you want a skinny line, you just use the end of your brush. Push down on it to make a fat line. So we're gonna do both to make these tree trunks. We're gonna kind of draw them with our paintbrush. So I'm gonna start off with skinny and maybe another skinny, okay? Maybe we'll see a part of a branch up here. And there's always branches that stick off of branches, right? So we're going to do this, make another branch here, there, wherever you feel like they should be. And a branch off a branch off a branch. But see how I'm just using the tip of my brush? Just letting that touch your paper just barely. And I've not had to reload my paint at all. Like it's still going from the first time I loaded it up. Now the bottom of the tree is going to be fatter. So what we're going to do is connect all this stuff. Okay. Just like you're drawing it with a pencil. We're drawing our tree trunk with our paintbrush. Okay, and we're going to do that same thing for every single tree. 
I'm going to have. Maybe this guy might be a little skinnier. It's a little bit farther away. Oh, I made a fat branch, but you know what? That's okay. You can't really mess this up, guys. It's your little world. <laughs> your tree, Jeff. And we're going to connect them. And if it looks kind of funny, like mine kind of looks funny, because this guy's a little fat, then I might have to fatten everybody else up. So I'm going to make this thicker. And this thicker. So it doesn't look weird. I'm going to do a branch off a branch off a branch and make the bottom fatter. There we go. Now you look a little more real, right? Okay, we're running a little past time, but it's okay if it's okay with you guys. And we're going to continue this for every little clump of leaves. We're going to have another tree trunk. So we're going to have about three more. To make our little fall thing. Oh, I got too much water. What happens if you get too much water? You just go back and get more paint. Or you can take your paper towel. If it gets too runny, drippy, and... Just remember the list thing I showed you guys, how we made the clouds? That can also kind of almost erase if you get too much paint or too much water. So we're gonna, see I fixed it. So we can go back and redraw that. If you get, but you gotta work quick. If you don't get it when it first happens, like it'll dry and you won't be able to get it off there if it dries. That tree, he's, he's dancing a little bit. Shaking his hips. I'm going to make some roots on my trees. Did you think you'd be able to? This is something my high school kids are learning right now. Another tree. And the last one over here. I love making the branches. I think that's the funnest part. I'm so excited to see the work. Now, since there's leaves that are fall colors on the trees, you're probably going to have them on the ground. So we can do some splatter. Remember me telling you that's how I did leaves on the ground? So you're going to get your brush kind of wet and go back into our colors. And let's just splatter some on the ground around our tree trunk. So it looks like leaves that have fallen on the ground. We'll, and we'll remember to, to clean your brush in between colors, though. So dip Clean it off, and then let's go to the red. Let's splatter some red. Okay, let's clean that off, and let's do some yellow. The yellow doesn't show up, but you gotta get a little bit of extra water on your brush for the yellow, so you can get a lot of paint on your brush, because it, it takes a lot for that to show up. Look what we made. We made a beautiful fall thing today. I want to ask everyone, and I need you to answer so you can unmute and answer me if you would. Um, which of the, did you look at your pictures that you got in your kit? If so, what would you like to paint next week? Yes. Cat. 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 Yes. The cat? Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Mm -hmm. So I want you guys to try to have your cat sketch on your paper for next week. You want to do a bird? Is that what you say? We can probably, we might be able to do both. Okay. So for sure, let's have our cat drawn on our paper, on our watercolor paper. Can you guys try to do that transfer thing for me for Tuesday? Maybe. 
Melissa, if you stop sharing your screen, then you can see everybody's painting. Oh yeah, I gotta do that. Okay. Uh, where am I? Stop share. Okay. There is everybody. There we are. Hang on. Okay, I want to see these trees, guys. Yeah, everybody, hold up your painting. Please. Oh, Sarah, that's great. <laughs> well, I made this one. Oh, oh. You did awesome. Wow. Oh my gosh. I'm so happy, guys. Guys, with your permission, I'd I like am to so, it. so, so happy. That's amazing. Guys, with your permission, I'd like to take a screenshot. So if everybody hold up your picture and smile real big. Smile real big, hold Yay. your picture. Three, two, one. Wow. Oh wow. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much. Oh That's my gosh, these are so good. <laughs> They're fantastic, you guys. Oh my gosh. Wow. Did you guys know you could do this good in watercolor? Wow. It's got the brown. Okay. We're going to have so much fun. Oh my gosh. We're going to have a blast. Yay. I hope you show them off to everybody. These are wonderful. I love them. I am so proud of everybody. Thank you, Melissa. I Thank am you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. We will see you next week. Same time, same place. And if you if you miss we'll a kitty cat on a fence. <laughs> see y'all next week. Bye. 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 Have a great night.